Hello and welcome to another edition of DKSN. Uh, the last time we signed off, we had no idea we would be back under these circumstances. I'm Dan Pizzani. And I'm Kieran DePino. And yes, it has been a while, but we are back with Mr. Daryl Strawberry, who is just an inspiration for a lot of people. Terrific baseball player, but off the field just as, just as important. Daryl, regarding addiction, why is it so important that people with your experiences talk to the younger generations? Well, it's important uh, to be able to talk to the young generation so they can understand um, the importance of what addiction is really all about. Um, no one signs up for it. So it, it's a generation that's uh, really accustomed to uh, social media and Internet outlets and everything today. And um, they find themselves struggling because of just not, you know, the an being antisocial. And they find themselves looking for answers in life and they find themselves really running into the wrong situations in life today. And I think it's so important someone like myself who had experienced addiction, you know, at the highest level of being a professional athlete and knows what it can do to you. Uh, so we, we need to get the message out there that their life matters, young people's lives matter. And we like to really educate them more than anything. I think it's important we get back to educating young people about what addiction is all about. Mr. Darrell, what were you taught about addiction as a teenager, and what would you say to your teenage self if you were given that opportunity? Well, the thing about it is I wasn't really taught about it, you know, and I, I didn't know at the time because it really wasn't talked about. Uh, the stigma about it is, is, is always a negative side that no one should have a, a problem like that regardless of, you know, who you are and where you come from. But we don't understand what happens to people. It, I, if I look back and, and see who I am today, uh, and when I was back who I was there, um, I would have told myself never pick up a drink, never pick up a drug. I, I think it's so important that we, we get that message back out there to young people. Um, there's, there's a serious problem with, with, uh, with drugs today and, and sometimes we just uh, really don't talk about it enough uh, to people and we don't encourage them to stay away from it. And we make it an open door for them. Well, if, if you don't feel good, just take this. And, you know, that's not the case today because that's why we're in the epidemic we are in today. And how did addiction affect your personality and your mindset? <laughs> well, it affects, <laughs> it affects you uh, deeply inside. Um, uh, it brings about um, loneliness, emptiness. Uh, it brings about depression. It brings about all kind of things that come in a person's life once one get consumed with that kind of lifestyle. It's, it's hard to get out. It's not just an overnight thing. I think sometimes people think it's an overnight miracle and you could just yeah. get out of it. Uh, but it changes your personality. And what drugs do, what young people need to understand, and the message we're trying to convey to them tonight is it alters your mind and it changes you forever. Um, whatever you are feeling inside, the loneliness you are feeling inside, it takes that away and doesn't allow you to feel that. And, and that's a false feeling you know we need to be able to feel uh, what's happening to us and why we feel lonely inside and why we feel the emptiness inside as a kid so you have a book out titled don't give up on me who are you addressing when you're saying don't give up on me I'm addressing everyone across America is don't give up on anyone who has any kind of problem who has any kind of issue because we don't know uh, what their household is like uh, we can all paint our household as a good picture and make it as you know, we, we don't have problems, and, and when we walk out, you know, we live behind the picket fence, but we all, the whole house is burning up and, and kids are in trouble. It's a real reality of, of not giving up on people because um, it's important for us to learn to love them right where they're at because we don't really know what, what has happened in their home. And we can't be the judge because they struggle and they have problems, and some people look this way or some are slower than others. And we don't give up on people. We never should give up on people give up on people because it's not up to us you know we think we're the judges of, of other people's lives and we're not it's, 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 it's for us to care for them and love them and I think that's really important what the book is all about is an understanding don't ever give up on anyone because you never know what a person's life is going to turn out to be so your sons are both athletes what have you shared with them regarding addiction and has it affected their professional careers? Well, it really hasn't affected them. You know, of course, they probably had some, you know, struggles of learning about drinking. Uh, I, I've never had any problems with my, my kids, you know, even my boys, you know, as far as um, drugs or anything. And that's, that's been great because I've been able to sit down and tell them uh, the truth about it uh, and, and tell them don't ever, don't ever pick this up because if you do, uh, 
uh, you're going to find yourself struggling. And it doesn't matter who you are, how you look, how strong you are. Um, I was a strong Major League Baseball player, um, winning championships, hitting home runs, and, and being privileged my whole life. But I was empty on the inside and broken on the inside. And, and drugs altered everything about me on the inside to, to try to escape from you know, what's really hurting me. And then that's what I try to explain to my boys and, and being honest to them. I think it's important, you know, that people need to uh, really be honest about, you know, what addiction is today. And, and we need not to sweep it under the rug because we, we, that's been the major problem in our society. We, we sweep things under the rugs and think it's going to pass and it's not in my neighborhood and it's everywhere now. So you mentioned the, the social media, the anti-socialness. Um, you mentioned the drug epidemic that we do have in this country. Um, and sweeping things under the rug. Is that what we need to change culturally in the United States when it comes to addiction? Of course. Culturally, we need to change those kind of things. And we need communities come together. Uh, we need political people to come together. Uh, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a crisis across America for all of us. It's not just, you know, in one place and we turn and look the other way and say we don't have these problems. Um, every school has these problems. Every school is going to, the temptations of every school ground is going to, have to face this. Uh, somebody's going to come on the school grounds and want to give kids drugs. It's just the way it is. It's the society that we live in. So culturally, we have to we have to start uh, coming together as as people. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're black, white, rich, or poor. People need to understand uh, opiates alters the minds of children, and, and it takes their minds forever, and it gets them addicted like they've never been before. I've never seen anything in this country like. I've seen with the opiates and the heroin addiction, the way it's sweeping across America and killing kids. Uh, I deal with it every day, and it's the saddest thing that I've ever seen. So culturally, we need to we need to shape up, and we need to come to a place where we can uh, really, really care about uh, those that are lost and those that are afflicted. Well, since this is a sports show, uh, we have to ask you a couple questions regarding baseball. Um, if there's a player in the MLB that reminds you most of yourself, who would that be? Well, I really kind of don't watch a lot of MLB. You know, yeah. yeah, of course, I played, you know, for 17 years at the major league level. But, um, you know, I see some players that, you know, really uh, play the game the right way. Harper, he's a kid that played the right way. Trout um, he, and, and Judge, you know, who's for the Yankees. He, he's a phenomenal young player. He looks like he's um, learning a lot. He plays the game the right way, and, and, and it's good to see. It's good to see young players understanding the game and learning how to play it the right way, uh, because if they do, they have longevity in their career, and they just have to remember one thing, you know, it's not going to always be a good day every day, and when you can accept that, when young guys can accept that, and I think these three young guys have learned to accept that, and they learn how to come back the next day and, and perform like they, they're capable of performing. So you say you don't watch a lot of MLB, but the way the game has changed to the point now where hitters are hitting more home runs than they ever have and striking out more than ever, uh, do you think this is a good thing for the game? Well, I, no. I mean, home runs are great. I think the ballparks are a lot smaller. Okay. That's why you probably see more home runs um, by hitters. But I think they've gotten away from you know the, the base running of first to third. Um, of course, baseball's changed so much you know, far as – um, you can't break up a double play. You can't. You really, really, really can't slide into the second baseman or, or the shortstop, because you know in our days of playing, the second baseman and the shortstop didn't want to be there because we were going to kill him. You know, and you look at um, the changes of you can't run the catcher over. I never heard of that. You know, so I played at a different time and I had a different mindset. If the catcher blocked the plate, I'm gonna run him over. So now you got to slide around, and that could really cause players to get hurt. You know, trying to be able to do those type of things as a player. Because if you don't, you only know how to play the game one way, the right way. So I think a little things have uh, have changed, and and I, of course people say sometimes the games are long. Games are always going to be long. That's just the way baseball is. It's it's not a basketball game. It's not a football game. You know, it's a baseball game. So you got you got you got to go through the process of uh, of having things long innings and you know long time. You know, the game is just you know, out there, you know, being out there and everything. And it, it's a part of it, and, and we love it as a player. So no, no pitch clock, no pitcher limit. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, it's... Well, no pitch clock. I, I never... You shouldn't have that. No instant replays. Uh, if the umpire screws up, you, it's just part of it, you know. It, it happens, you know, and, and you have to go with the flow of it. We had to go with the flow of it. We, You know, I think it's so much delays when you go in there, and, and everybody's pointing... I saw guys pointing... To, to tell the bench I'm safe, go to the instant replay. It's like, 
that's not baseball. You know, you got to you got to go with the way the game has been created for years. You know, it's it's, it's America game. Baseball is it always will be, and um, you know we just need to get back to maybe you know playing the game like it used to be. I, I like that. I'm going to use that. From now on, people say, I'm going to say, Daryl Strawberry likes the human element in baseball. We need to keep it. You know? I like that. That's, that's, good. that's a good way to put it, the human element in, in baseball. You need to keep it the way it was. I mean, why change so many things? Because now all of a sudden you, you, you kind of slowed the pace of everybody's, as a player of mine, well, he thinks I'm safe, even though if I was called out. There's a lot of times I was safe, but I was called out and I had to, you know, I had to suck it up, you know. Yeah. It's, it's part of it, you know. It's part. It's part of what the game is all about. Yeah. Yeah. Finally, who do you think the best team in baseball is? Well, right now it looks like the Yankees. You know, it looks like the Yankees are really uh, pretty exciting. You know, they, you know, they have a, a way of building, and, and what I mean by that, they build the right way. They build through the farm system, and of course, you know, you had teams like Kansas City that did the same thing, build, and they was able to win. And you look at that Houston team, they were able to build, you know, through the farm system. When you start building through your farm system and developing your younger players, you have a better chance of uh, being a successful team because what happens is guys start to come up, they start to grow from the same farm system, they start to feel the same way, and, and that kind of gels together. And I remember back in our days in the early 80s um, when we came up, you know, when I came up in 83 and, uh, we got Hernandez over in the trade, but we got Carter in 85, but we had young players. We had Gooden. We had our pitching staff. All the guys started coming up from the minor leagues, uh, really kind of jailed together because we were homegrown, you know, and when you like that, you, 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 it's something special about that, and, and you, learn to, you learn to play uh, uh, well together, I think, because you come from the farm system, the same farm system. So um, I think that's a big plus when you have that. Well, thank you for your time. We really appreciate the interview. Yes. And that is all for this DKSN. For the entire um, JPI TV news crew, I'm Kieran DeFino. And I'm Dan Pizzani. Remember, no one circles the wagons like the Buffalo Bills. Thank you, Derek. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me.